Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, and today we are going to do another episode of the Movie Spotlight series. Um, but before we do get to that, I would like to say we are coming back with Rated R Rips Episode 5 tomorrow, and we will be screening an all-time stinker, Dragon Ball Evolution. Uh, we will have a special guest, Dakota, with us, who is a big Dragon Ball fan, uh, as is uh, Cham and myself, and uh, we will uh, torture ourselves together. So if you have the movie, or if you want to get it on, uh, or if it's you know available on streaming, or if it's available you know through a mirror or something like that, if you want to watch the movie with us, we'll be doing that at 9 o'clock tomorrow night. Um, so if you would like to uh, to see that, then just boot up the movie and come watch with us. It'll be fun. So uh, now that we're past that, let's get to the topic of the day, which is an all-time classic film uh, from Clint Eastwood, who also directed, who stars and directed this film, uh, and that is High Plains Drifter. Now, High Plains Drifter is possibly one of my favorite westerns of all time. Uh, it rivals The Searchers for me uh, because it's such an interesting concept. It's, it, it combines elements of this very dreamlike uh, supernatural essence with your classic kind of western tale, but it's not. Uh, it doesn't have this element where, you know, oh, there's the good guys, there's the bad guys. Just everybody's bad. There's like, there's really no good guy in this movie. There's, there's a couple of characters that you could probably say are good, but there's not really um, any characters that you could really say are 100% like, you know, true, brutal, true blue, like John Wayne types. You know, Clint Eastwood probably plays one of the most jaded characters in this movie, um, where the, the entire idea of it is there's this town called Lago. And basically, uh, they're uh, afraid because a guy that they put in jail years before um, ha has gotten out, and he is coming to uh, and he is coming to kill all of them because they put him in jail, uh, him and his gang. And uh, so they find they happen to come across this drifter who just walks through, uh, who's played by Clint Eastwood, and they basically get his help to try and fend off these uh, these bandits. And but through this, Clint Eastwood is just torturing the hell out of these people. And you find out that there's this secret, you know, underbelly. This this town has a lot of skeletons in their closet, and you find out a lot about you know, what happened before, you know, why these guys went to jail, what happened uh, between them and the townspeople, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to give too, too much of it away, uh, because it's a really good story, and if you really like westerns, you should sit down and you should watch it. Again, this is one of my favorite westerns, uh, and it has some of the best scenes in it, and Clint Eastwood has some really good one-liners. Uh, there's actually a really funny scene where he's watching, like, the townspeople kind of practice on these dummies with guns, and uh, this guy who's next to him is, is starts pulling out a knife like he's going to stab Clint Eastwood. He looks back. He looks down at him. Actually, he doesn't even really look at him. He just talks to him. He says, you're going to look awfully funny with that knife sticking out of your ass. And it's so funny. It's so funny and it's so badass. The only way that Clint Eastwood can be a badass. And Again, th this is an early director uh, directorial debut for Clint Eastwood. I really do love Clint Eastwood movies. Uh, you know, just to you know, to name a few, you know, stuff like Unforgiven. Uh, I know he also, I believe, he directed Sudden Impact, uh, which had Sandra Locke in it as well, who he was seeing at the time. Um, and uh, Play Misty for Me is another really good one where he doesn't really play his prototypical uh, badass kind of, uh, you know, tough guy character. Um, <laughs> And I really do enjoy a lot of the films that he has directed, you know, even others, you know, Gran Torino, um, yeah, I, I, there's, there's probably other ones, but they're just not coming to mind at the moment, but, you know, he really does a good job with, uh, High Plains Drifter, and it, it really, really exemplifies kind of, it almost deconstructs the Western in kind of a sense where, you know, it goes against the prototypical things that we're used to seeing in, in like, a classic John Wayne type of Western. And that's kind of why I like it. It's it's not cookie cutter. It's very different. Um, it doesn't give you that. And it, the other thing is it doesn't give you the same feeling that a lot of Eastwood's other films, other Westerns, give you. Uh, even where he plays a very jaded character. This doesn't feel like a Dollars trilogy. The, the, this doesn't feel like an Unforgiven or a Pale Rider or a Joe Kid or something like that. This feels very much like its own thing and its own little kind of confined thing. And then, you know, the, the stuff that you get in the film with Eastwood's interaction with the townspeople is great. Uh, you know, all the underhanded, disgusting stuff that goes 
goes on, uh, it, it, again, is really, really great. Um, and, you know, the, the imagery, too. There's a lot of really uh, interesting imagery in this where, especially at the end of the film, where there's a portion where he says we're going to have a barbecue, and they actually paint the entire town red. And you see that uh, on the, the town sign that's outside the town that says Lago on it, they actually paint the word in red hell over Lago. Um and you know it's ironic because obviously you painted the entire town right you know it's a very it's a very visual metaphor and it's kind of on the on the nose but it does work um, and it's it's so fun that he, he he's able to just manipulate these townspeople because they need him so badly to survive uh, the coming onslaught from these uh, these gangsters that are coming to kill them um, but you know, again, that feeds into the story, that feeds into Clint Eastwood's character in this movie, because by the end of the movie, you understand exactly why he's doing what he's doing, even though throughout the movie there are hints given as to why, but for the most part, you don't really understand why he's, other than the fact that maybe he's just an asshole, you know, you really don't understand completely uh, why he's doing what he's doing to these townspeople, um, and, you know, again, there's just so much debauchery in this town. There's almost the seven deadly sins entirely in this town. Uh, you know, the I believe, if I remember correctly, the sheriff is, you know, an overweight loser. Uh, one of the, the innkeeper's uh, housewife is a whore. Um, you know, it's just a whole bunch of insane shit uh, that's going on in this town. And, it again, it's exemplified through Clint Eastwood. He's kind of like the channeling point, his character, for everything that's happening around this film. So as soon as he walks into town all of these events get kicked into motion and you understand what's going on, um, at least by the end of it. So, you know, I couldn't recommend this movie higher, especially for people that really enjoy Westerns or enjoy, or enjoy Clint Eastwood films in general. Uh, that includes films that he's been in as well as films that he's directed, especially films that he's directed. I think if you haven't seen this movie and you're a very big fan of Clint Eastwood directed films, then you really should. Um, but... That's my, that's my opinion on the movie, uh, but I want to know yours. Have you ever seen High Plains Drifter? Do you enjoy it? Um, do you uh, like uh, Clint East or some of Clint Eastwood's early directorial uh, films like this and Play Misty for Me and things like that? Uh, you know, put your comments below. Uh, then uh, make sure to uh, hit the bell for notifications, hit the like button, subscribe, and remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?